right. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. We are at episode five for Sessions with Eddie. And today, I have a special guest, Brad from Link Living. So, Brad, if you just want to quickly introduce yourself, mate. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm Brad. I'm from Link. Uh, I run the property division here, so we have yep. accounting, bookkeeping, mm -hmm. real estate, finance, and uh, digital marketing. So okay. I run the yep. real estate division, um, but we specialize in residential property management. Mm -hmm. yeah, nice. Thanks for having us. Yeah, not a problem at all. So in light, it is Friday. I thought we might as well make it a true session with Eddie, and we'll crack some beers, eh? <laughs> you all quit one time. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Go again. <laughs> okay, so... Um, Getting Brad on today just to see how is he, he's experiencing uh, the current uh, rental markets at the moment, the property management side of things. Obviously, there's a lot of news and reports out there. You know, the rental market's taking a pretty big hit. You know, people are losing their jobs or getting um, less pay. You know, the the flood of properties that are potentially coming on because you know I've heard um, Airbnb owners are taking their properties and turning into long term instead of short term, mm. um, and obviously those kind of things that, that are happening out there at the moment due to the stem of the corona. So just wanted to see what Brad um, is experiencing in his own markets. How's, how's it all going? Yeah, look, um, to be honest, we haven't actually seen too much of a downturn in our, in our markets that we're currently in. Yeah. Uh, for example, I've only had two or three tenants ask for a rental reduction okay. due to COVID. Yep. And of those ones, only one of them actually was truly impacted financially by COVID, mm -hmm. and they had to get a. Um, the landlord gave them a, a rental reduction of fifty percent on their rent. Okay. And they've all gained employment back now. Oh wow! That's um, good. So they were given two months of of reduced rent, and now they're coming back into paying the normal rent. Yep. Um, so <clears throat> I haven't seen a downturn with our vacant properties as well. Mm -hmm. So we're still having a large amount of people inquire for properties, having a large amount of people apply for them. Yeah. Um, and, the, and the properties are still renting pretty quickly. Yep. Well, that's good to hear. Um, especially, I think, because you specialize a lot in the inner city ring, in the closer city or those kind of markets or? Yeah. So we, we specialize in the um, inner city suburbs. Yep. But we do service the outer outer rings of Brisbane as well. Okay. So you yep. do sometimes see the differences in, in uh, the inquiries and things like that of different areas? Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yep. So you, you've experienced something pretty positive, which is good to see. Yep. Um, I think, you know, probably the anticipations of, of us coming out of it mm. um, a lot quicker than yeah. expected. Um, mm -hmm. And what I mean, they were talking about September, but now we're in June, July, and pretty much nearly at stage three restrictions of easing. So yeah, so that should be middle of July. Yep. I am, you know, I'm, I'm quietly hopeful mm -hmm. for it because, um, you know, job keeper, job seeker and things like that, that's going to dry up September yep. 30. Mm. So I think that's where we might start seeing some real impacts if yeah. people haven't gained employment back by then. Yep. Um, but we are seeing positive signs from our tenants that did lose their jobs yeah. um, or were stood down for a little bit. They're coming back into that employment, so that's something that's really positive. Yeah, well, it's good to see a lot of small businesses you know, slowly get back into opening their doors, yep. um, which is what we want and uh, what we need. I mean, it's good to see that you know, people are sort of, the, the wheels are still turning, basically. Yep. What do you think the rest of the 2020 and potentially going <laughs> to 2021 looks like for you? Um, I guess it just goes back to what I said before yeah. with, um, you know, coming to that nervous time around mm. the end of September, yep. start of October. But yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm quietly confident that if we're able to open these restrictions sooner, mm. um, we came into level two restrictions two weeks earlier. Yep. If we can come into the level three restrictions two weeks earlier, I think that will see a lot of businesses be able to open back up yep. um, and to start getting that you know, injection back into the economy yeah. and yeah, hopefully help out a bit. Build that, build that traction mm. essentially back into it. Um, now that's good to hear. So I mean, what could be some tips even right now? Um, I know it's, it's, it's gonna be a bit of a waiting game yep. <laughs> until that, that time. Um, I mean, end of financial year now is, is obviously at our doorstep. Yep. So we'll probably find out a bit more straight away of the direction of where the economy and where everything could be going at this point. But then once again, yeah, like you said, at the end of the third quarter um, will be another point of, you know, what's, yeah. what's going to happen really. Yeah. Uh, so what, what could be even, you know, a landlords going through this process right now, um, you know, some tips maybe you could provide them. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't have a crystal ball and I can't see <laughs> yeah, into the future. Yeah. yeah. But what I can tell landlords is if they're trying to get their property rented out quickly, and if you want to get that premium rent, you need to have your property, you know, it needs to be attractive mm. in the current market. Um, you said it before in one of your previous episodes for preparing your, your properties for sale. Yes. It's exactly the same with 
uh, with rental properties as well. If you want to live in that property, you know, you need to make that property look like you want. You know, mm -hmm. If you want other people to want it, yep. then you need to present the property to its best possible yes. um, standard. So yep. if, if there's marks in the walls, if it's looking dirty, get a bonds clean, get those um, you know, the, the patches in the walls, get them fixed up, yep. get it repainted if you have to. I know money can be tight, mm. so you know, not everyone's gonna be able to go out and repaint the walls, re-carpet, re, -carpet, re yes, put a new kitchen and bathroom in. But just get the property as clean as possible, get everything working. If an air conditioner's not working, mm. if a fan's not working, something like that, get it done. And then also get great photos, yes. a digital floor plan, so that people can have a digital walkthrough of your property mm -hmm. if you don't have a video walkthrough done. Yep. Get, get those things done because most people are time poor these days. So they're gonna go online, they're gonna go on realestate.com, they'll go on domain.com or they'll go on um, you know, the real estate's website and have a look through the vacant listings. Yeah. They're gonna go through the photos. So if you've got some pretty you know, shitty photos mm. taken on a, a mobile phone or something, yep. I, know, I know smartphones now are taking great photos, but yeah. they're, not, they're not as good as a, um, you know, a professional camera yep. um, from a, a property photographer. They're going to look through those photos. That's going to be their walkthrough. And if they like that, that's when they'll reach out to your property manager and ask to have a walkthrough. Yeah. Yeah. So that's catching that engagement. <clears throat> yeah. um, like I said in my previous episode, but you brought up the floor plan, which is actually uh, important in, in all markets. I think mm. whether you're selling, renting um, for all sellers and landlords out there, because, you know, people want to get a bit of a feel of the layout. And, yeah. and I think there was a percentage, I can't remember off the top of my head what it was that really said the comp put out in regards to people not looking past or looking, you know, flicking past properties yeah. that don't have a floor plan. Um, and it can't be because a lot of time people are going to be coming with furniture mm. and they want to know, oh, is it going to, you know, be relatively suited to, you know, their, their layout of what they want. Yeah. At least having the floor plan, even if you don't have the video walkthrough, is, is a huge plus. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely make sure, make sure that's on the listing uh, presentation yeah. and the advertisement. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I did actually, I spoke to a potential landlord in New Farm yesterday. Okay. It's a beautiful $1,200 per week property. Yep. And I had a look at the photos online that their previous agent had listed and mm. it didn't have a floor plan. Mm. And I told them when I got to the property, it was really great to actually see it in person because I could see what the property was actually like. Yep. And I, because you can see all these really nice photos, but you just have no idea of the flow of the property. Exactly. Um, and so after being able to actually walk through and have a look, just recommending that floor plan to them is going to be able to sell it more and they thought that the photos were great from their previous agent but they didn't even think of the floor plan mm. which is such a huge asset to have yeah they're really cheap as well perfect yep. now apart from the presentation what do you think of some of the other key key factors they might need to consider um to, to open the doors essentially for the, for the um tenants a bit more yep so um so get direction from your current property manager so once again, personally, I haven't actually seen a downturn in the, uh, the prices of properties, yep. but that might be different for your market. So mm. you might have lost 50 to $100 a week in value for your property. You might have gained yep. you know, $20, $30 a week. Yep. So have a chat to your property manager and have a look now because what you may have advertised it for mm. um, at the end of last year or halfway through last year might not be the same as what the property's worth now. Yep. And if you go through and you advertise your property at over market value, mm. then it's gonna sit vacant for a long time. Yep. Uh, because after the first 48 hours listed on realestate.com, yeah. your property's gonna drop down the list and the other ones that have a premier listing or a highlight listing yep. on realestate.com, yours is gonna get dropped down, 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 down. And I think there was a statistic from realestate.com, it was something like um, 60 or 70% of people don't go past page yes, one or two. Yeah, I've, I've heard that before, yep. Yeah, and so you just need to make sure that your property is there, it's priced correctly. You may be struggling right now and you need that rent, mm -hmm. but if your property sits vacant for a couple of weeks, yeah. then that's money you've already lost out on if you just took a 10, 15 or $20 per week hit. Yeah. Um, yep. And then just wear that out for when the market does pick back up. Yeah, because obviously right now you're probably seeing that extra few extra bit of uh, properties. Um, have you experienced any <coughs> landlords talking about changing their property? You know, if they're Airbnb type properties yeah. in terms of short term, long term uh, leases and things like that. Yeah, I actually had a um, a landlord call me last week. So majority of the apartments in that complex yep. were Airbnb. Okay, and most. Uh, not most of them, all of them have dropped off because yep. restrictions to interstate traveling, um, people just aren't, you know, no one's coming in from overseas as well, so yep. they can't go through and hire out this this Airbnb. So they're all kind of looking at um, a better solution now, or a different solution, sorry, mm -hmm. um, for more long-term tenants. So that is something. I even had someone that ran a motel in Fortitude Valley yep. that had, you know, a fully furnished apartment, one bedroom, beautiful yep. apartment there, that they needed to have a look at different options as well to try and find someone potentially long term instead of just a short two, three week stay. Yeah, well, okay, yeah, so it's obviously <laughs> happening out there. What yeah. do you reckon in terms of some 
things like say for example pets like, yep. will, would be something of ice in terms of i know a lot of lot of places that yeah. or, or landlords can can question you know, yeah. people that want to bring pets and obviously now in a changing market with potential you know a bit more influx of properties online for rent yeah what could be a suggestion for them there yeah that's a good one actually mm. um so domain uh, brought out a um uh, a paper as well and they yep. said that i think it was something like 60 percent of mm. um people in queensland have a pet so if you have on your listing no pets allowed you're wiping out 60 percent of your potential tenants mm. uh, i know it's different because i have seen people apply for properties that it's you know specifically says no pets allowed yep but because this landlord got four or five applications and every single one of them had a pet they understood that they weren't going to be able to rent out this property mm. unless they actually had someone that did have a pet. Yeah. You don't have to do it, it's just a recommendation. Yeah. But if you can just put in your ad pets upon application, then that just opens up your options yes. you know, to a lot more people. And yes. if you're getting a lot of applications and there's that one that's really good that doesn't have a pet, you've got, you know, you've got your ideal tenant that you wanted. Yep. But then if you've got all applications with, with pets, you may need to look at that. Yeah. Um, or else your property might be looking at sitting vacant for a month or so. So opening up the doors, just giving you a few more options, really. Yep. Yeah, as a suggestion. Look, thank you for your time. Appreciate it, uh, Brad. Uh, look, at the moment, you're pretty busy by the sounds of it as well with what's happening. Yeah. Uh, things are picking back up. Thanks again for joining us, and um, I'll see you guys next time. Awesome. Thanks Cheers. for having me. Cheers, mate. <laughs> All right, and we're, and we're back. Forgot to uh, give you details. So, Brad, if you're trying to let everyone know how they can contact you. Yep. Um, so, you can get me brad at link.com.au, uh, or you can get me directly on my mobile number, which is 0432 565 556. Awesome. I'll leave the details in the comments and also at the end of the video. He's happy to help. And um, once again, if you are selling or buying, feel free to hit me up as well. Link Living. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.